Hello, good evening. We're back here at TB's. It's about 12 o'clock Saturday night. Got my knife handle cured this afternoon. I let it dry real good in the smoker at about 500 degrees. Right on the rack, away from the fire, of course, but it smoked it up some and I've rasped it down. As you can see, it's all dried. There's no sap coming out of it now at all. So I think I got it pretty good. I have no guarantees, but it'll dry eventually on there anyway. I, I, hollowed, I had drilled this out and made a handle out of it. I had to to, to make a one-piece handle. And I had this part cut open down here and this open here. So I installed the uh, hickory handle onto my machete. This is the third handle I put on there. This thing is definitely the dope for splitting wood. I've split a lot of cooked wood, firewood, both with this. I'm talking, ladies and gentlemen, about wind shook knots. Now, the way I did that, I didn't baton this through it. I ain't going to sit here and say you're going to slam it all the way to the top to the bottom. You don't, don't the first blow. When you hit the wood where you want to split it, sometimes you got to split it with a maul first to get it started. But then you split it down to the size uh, wood you want, just like you was using a hand axe, pretty much. Now, what I did, well, I've got a wood block out there for splitting up my firewood with and my cookwood. When I slammed this into the wood at the angle of the split, wherever the split is, and at the size of the wood I want to quarter it, or if I want to split it up and cook wood, this is the dope for making cook wood. Guaranteed. And I tell you, I sit there and what I do when I, when I get stuck in the wood good, buried in there an inch or so deep, then I just take and raise it up and hit it against the block on the on your uh, stump. you got to have a wooden stump. That way you're not beating the crud out of the back of this here with a baton or a wooden mallet. I wouldn't do it. You can if you have to, but it will split just like uh, this. And what I like about using the machete for splitting after I've got this heavier machete built uh, that I've enjoyed about it, I'd like to have a full quarter inch though across here. This one's 3 sixteenths. It's off of a lawnmower. It's a lawnmower blade. That's why there's three holes in the middle. It's, it was originally an old lawnmower blade. And I turned into a machete. It's good carbon steel. It works really good. I put a guard on it. Most machetes do not have a hand guard. But I did that because of splitting wood. I figured that would protect my hand whenever you're beating on wood. You know what I'm saying? You, you need a full body shield sometimes. Anyhow, you got to watch it when you're splitting one of these because it could fly off there and hit you. And it, and it has hit me several times uh, splitting. But if you watch what you're doing, and as you get close to the bottom there, you just tap on it till it gets all the way through. Then you just pull it apart and then chop it down smaller and smaller to whatever size you want. I can, I will, I have videos up there of my cookwood, and I can add a video tomorrow showing you what I'm up to. I've had a request to build a little potato uh, knife for a lady, and I'm going to build her one. I don't know if I'm allowed to send knives in the mail or not. I've got to find out how you go about shipping uh, knives without it being a terrorist threat. Because you never know what might be. Consider that. I'll have to check into it and see if I can even send her one. And I won't be able to let her know until after Monday when I get to the post office because I don't know about shipping. I've never shipped any knives in the mail, but I, I intend to if I get any orders. Uh, somehow, anyhow, I'll ship them somewhere. They got to have a truck or UPS or something that you can ship them. I don't know what the shipping would be. That's why I just set a $12 flat rate for each each uh, order uh, because it depends on the weight. See, like this in here, this machete here, I think it what I weighed it once. It was four pounds, and when you're slamming four pounds in the wood, you can see why it was split. My next machete that I build off my new forge when I finish it up is going to have more of a bolo here, bigger uh, for splitting. This worked out pretty good. Pretty satisfied with this gladiator machete. 
that I built but I would like to try the bolo and see if it will split better and I want full quarter inch steel when I build them next time. The quarter inch steel I think uh, is just a tad heavier than this. Uh, I, I imagine it would weigh four and a half maybe five pounds then it's a quarter inch thicker I mean it's one inch thicker but I mean one inch forgive me I mean one sixteenth of an inch thicker than this one but this has really worked good I can't complain too much about the three sixteenths machete it's splitting like a champ I mean it split everything I've asked it to split and then some and I, I kid you not, I split the knots, twisted wood, out there with this on video. This this machete is just about as good as as the as the hand axe, but you know the hand axe is going to be uh, heavier and thicker. But what I like about this for splitting out handles and stuff, this don't split it so wide. I can split a straighter uh, slice off from the, the wood to make handles like this. You know, now you can't even tell that it's been damaged, that I had uh, split it down here at the bottom. I just filled it with another piece of wood in there after I got it down to the tang almost. And this here had a hole here, so I glued it in there with eight glue, filled it with nothing but eight glue and uh, pieces of wood, scrap wood of the same kind as this, hickory. And I took some hickory shavings and dropped down in there in the glue and filled in all the holes, including the back where I drilled this out. So now it looks like one piece handle. Yeah, it's a little rustic and rough yet. I've still got some sanding to do. That's why I'm still going to have to go to Fort Smith, I guess, and get me a sander. Got to go to Lowe's or somewhere where I can charge it. Get me a sander and then uh, I want a belt sander where I can work this thing down. And another thing I really need bad is a is probably a um, uh, what do you call it? Bandsaw. A bandsaw you can cut with a bandsaw you can cut your angle so much neater and smoother and could have made a better project of this than this rough rasping job I did on this handle. But it fits my hand good. It's except for right here I got a little wear little bit spot here I'm going to work down right there but most machetes do not like I say do not have a hand guard but this is the gladiator machete as I call it and it's it's quite a bit like the short swords that they used back in Rome these are about you know about the same thickness probably uh, I don't know I've never seen one of theirs except on TV of course you know only in the movies so we, I don't really know what they had from what the Bible spoke of, most of their swords was crap. In the beginning, they were made out of copper, and copper is not very strong. Oh, it, it would job a hole in you, but four has been, you know, very hard. And steel, copper is soft steel, soft metal, and it's not a very good sword making material. So I'm told that's what they used during the time of Jesus when he was on the earth. Uh, they was talking about the Romans using copper swords. And the copper sword was, you know, no match for a steel sword like this, or machete as I call it. But it resembles more of a short sword or a gladiator sword. This one does, the short sword. This one's 21 inches overall. Well, not overall, but over the blade. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. It's twenty. It, it's twenty-two inches overall, and and it's uh, twenty. And it's uh, nineteen inches here, from tip to the <coughs> to the guard. From tip to the guard. That's nineteen inches. The blade is on this one. Now tomorrow I'll have to go look at some metal. I'm thinking about building, like I say, a bolo machete. Uh, for splitting wood and I want to build me I've been studying and debating on what kind of sword I want to put in my arsenal of weapons. I have many knives, I have many guns uh, in my weapon collection. Uh, the only gun I ain't got that I'd like to have really would be a um, 308 NATO automatic or something like that would be plenty good even a 30 six, 